CIT 225 Network Security and Penetration Testing. We are covering a chapter on web application vulnerabilities. Now we covered up to the point where we discussed in our previous lecture about securing the web system and web servers. Today we'll be talking about monitoring the server for any suspicious activity. Now the measures we must take is learn that the suspicious traffic looks like and monitor the system logs, install SNORT on your server to search for the signature attacks, install for, uh, for some scripts to watch uh, for attacks on the server. Now we'll have to understand that since we have web server which would be exposed to the outside world, it means that it would be getting lots of traffic from the internet. We'll have to keep an eye on the kind of traffic which is coming to our server and the timings on which the traffic is coming to the server. If it's a sales server or related to the transactions, etc., you must have a defined timeline where usually your customers are active on the website so that you can um, you can judge the traffic which is coming on the website as well as the location from where the traffic is coming. If all of a sudden you'll see a surge in the uh, number of uh, traffic or the hits on your server, it means that something suspicious. In order to monitor that, you can install SNORT, which is a utility in order to uh, search for any uh, possible attacks, their signatures are there. So in that, if you'll search for the signatures, you can exactly find out that what's going on. Then you can find some scripts with the help of which it would help you in finding the uh, vulnerabilities on the server and different attacks which are taking place. And now we have different tools like Tripwire. Uh, this is not only limited to these tools. There are lots of tools available in the market with the help of which um, you can find out that what's the overall integrity and the uh, protection of your server. Now you, you'll, you'll have to pay special attention on the integrity of the passwords and the registry entries if they has been changed over the period of time. Uh, you can set the tools to send an email to the server administrator by or a page to her cell phone. Um, nowadays, uh, we have uh, alerts like intrusion detection systems and intrusion prevention systems with the help of which it can send us automatically uh, emails or it can trigger an alert through which it would send an email uh, to the administrator informing him or her about any possible uh, suspicious activity which is taking place on the server. Now you can limit the number of users having the administrative access or the root access to the server. If it's a uh, Linux server, usually they call it a root access or a Windows server, we call it a administrative access. You can reduce the number of guys who have the administrative privileges, who uh, have the highest rights to make modifications to the server configuration and changes, who, uh, who can install um, the patches and updates to the server. Now, if it's a normal user who is using the server for the applications, they must use either the web-based web -based services or the service accounts in order to access the services which are rendered by those servers. Allow the user only a secure share encrypted remote administration or you can allow the users by their domain username and passwords or you can restrict them by their MAC addresses or IP addresses who must have a remote access to those servers. They can be authenticated by user access through the graphical user interface control panel or always maintain a web page on a server on the internet and make all changes to your web pages from there. Uh, it's not recommended that whenever you want to make any changes to the uh, website, you'll be logging into the server remotely and you'll be making to the changes directly on the pages which are hosted on that server. For example, if it's a web server, you don't need to log into the server in order to make the modifications to the website. Rather, you can have your own application installed on your computer. Through that, you'll make the modifications on the web pages and you'll send the files to the server so that you can uh, update the website. The second way is through the content management systems through which you have a web-based admin panel and through that you can make the modifications on the website so that it would be reflected on rest of the website. 
Now controlling access to the confidential documents is also very important because we need to see that which documents must go on the internet or to the public and which uh, documents should remain on the local uh, access on the computers. Next is controlling access to the confidential documents. Setting up remote authority and administrative facilities allows you to monitor all users activity on your private development machine. So there are two ways to monitor it. Either you can see it through the uh, network monitoring tools or you can see it on the firewall. How can we have access to the things and how can we uh, control the things which are appearing on the website. Uh, further we can keep a record of the web server logs on a protected machine so that if anyone is trying to access those servers from a remote access or whenever the servers were, server was reached for updating the services or to upload the files you'll have a complete log of it um, and that would give you an insight that if your server was accessed during the uh, off-duty hours. Frequently remove the unnecessary files from the scripts directory and remove default documents which are there on the web server. So you must not have any default settings or default things on the server except for the items which you are aware of that you have uploaded it on the machine. Now prior to the connecting to the web server to the internet make certain, um, make certain that it has been hardened enough that it should not have any open ports through which anyone from the outside network must be able to gain access either to the root of the computer or the basic settings on the server itself. If the organization has several web servers and they are maintained by different departments, remove trust relationship that might exist between them. So if there is an administrator, a local administrator who is looking after rest of the things in the department, it's not necessary that he will be the administrator of the server. The server requires a set of skills and expertise in order to harden the operating system and to look after the overall security of the servers. That's why it's usually maintained by the data center guys or the data or the uh, Windows team which is responsible for the security and overall functioning of the servers regardless of whether they are web servers, application servers or whatever. We have a baseline uh, configuration and requirements or rules and regulations and then we enforce them so that once a policy is enforced, it's enforced on all servers regardless of the services provided by those servers. That ensures that if we are having any new policies about the access or the uh, ports or the kind of authority level, it should reflect on all servers equally. Now checking for different security issues, periodically scan the web server with the tools such as Nmap or Nessus. There are lots of tools available with the help of which from time to time we can scan the servers for any possible vulnerabilities or any presence of um, malware or uh, phishing tools which might be there on the server. Now, um, since um, it's exposed to the internet, lots of traffic is coming to it, we'll have to keep an eye that uh, what kind of content is there on the web server, um, if the files are 100% correct or there are any files or scripts which has been copied to the server which could pose a threat to the server and rest of the servers. That's why usually we have endpoint protection systems installed which would include the uh, firewall as well as the antivirus and anti-malware which would provide a first layer of protection before anything is uh, uh, saved or copied on those servers. Um, we have lots of software like Zone Alarm etc which is a firewall software for uh, Windows machine which could monitor the unexpected activities. That's in addition to the um, uh, corporate uh, firewall which is installed on those machines. Now there are some web browser vulnerabilities as well. Now the client side issues are similar to the server side. Physical tampering of the operating system vulnerabilities do exist. For most users the main focus is the web browser. The most common sources of the web browser exploits is the physical tampering. Now since these uh, uh, are the client softwares or the application through which we access the internet, uh, there are lots of different browsers available which you can install on the computers. As a corporate policy, we define that which browser should be installed on the computers and the usually the users don't have any access for installing or uninstalling anything from the machines. 
that's why we in the IT department uh, lay down the base uh, requirements for the installation of the uh, browsers which should be used when accessing the websites or uh, accessing the website for the organization itself. We make sure that those browsers are always updated and are, um, all the operating systems are also applied with the latest patches uh, which should be available on Microsoft. Now, if the uh, people are usually uh, playing with the overall um, uh, settings of the computer or the browser or they are installing any extensions for ease of work, there are lots of extensions available, they might cause a threat to the server through which you are trying to access the things or it might expose certain things which are not supposed to be shown on the website. That's why installation of any sort of plugins or things on the browser on the client side is usually discouraged. Now the cache file is also very important when a website is accessed. It maintains some information on the computer regarding the content that you viewed and the content that you downloaded plus the username and password things which were exchanged between the web server and your computer. The browser receives it from the web server that the browser interprets and then it presents the data to the best of its ability. Everything accessed on the internet is copied to a cache file and if the file is available in the cache the browser displays it in the presence the displaying the file available on the server. Now usually there is a setting on the browser that it would clear the cache as soon as you will close the browser. That's the best setting but in some cases if you are entering username and password which is required on regular basis maybe it would ask you to log in over and over again and it becomes a tedious uh, job for most of the employees who are a little bit slow in entering the passwords on the computers. So that's why you must adopt the settings uh, to the best of your knowledge and to ease the work of the employees in the organization. The information saved in the cache files are the history files, bookmarks of the browsers, etc. It might pose a threat if accessed by someone intending to gather the information about the user. Um, most of the time it happens that if you're logged in, for example, to any business intelligence system and there is a page which takes some time to browse and reach to that location. Now, some people create a bookmark of those inside pages. So if someone would try to click on it, all they need to do is just to enter the username and password password and it would take them directly to those pages. Now that would expose the identity and overall location of those pages which are uh, accessed through a series of steps and this information must not be saved on the computers. If the browser supports HTML3 extensions and Java you are not properly and, and are not properly configured, your history file, cache and other files can be copied from your hard drive and then they can be decrypted in order to gather the rest of the information and directly upload it to an attacker server by using the JavaScript or ActiveX and then he'll be opening and reading the content whatever is saved on those, uh, those files. Now the history file allows you to view the pages that you have visited in the last user defined number of days. Information regarding the uh, forms you should submit on the web page is also included in the history and history file may include the credit card details or the username and passwords etc. As you can see over here that's a uh, privacy tab in Firefox where you can set the settings that how long you want to keep the information about the history and username and password. But nowadays since everything is synced on their cloud, your information is being saved on the cloud regarding the bookmarks, username and passwords and rest of the things and it's encrypted and saved by a password. So the, uh, you can set the settings on the browser itself that whenever the browser is closed it would clear all the cookie files and the cache files because whenever you'll be accessing it from any other computer it would automatically get it or sync it from the Firefox uh, uh, servers. Now bookmarks plays an important role um, because uh, they help you in storing the information about the web pages you have visited and the bookmarks do not expire like the history files. They remain over there. If, your bookmark, um, if you have bookmarked a website that requires entering a password, you can save the username and password. Attacker can access your machine and may be able to access the controlled access to the sites. That's why on Firefox and lots of other browsers, if you want to see the passwords, there is a different password in order to see the saved passwords which are there on the browser itself. 
Now, cookies are a small text files stored on a computer by web servers. It contains information about the last session, when the website was uh, visited, and rest of the uh, activities that you performed on the website. Cookie store uh, followed link information and may store username and password information. Cookies are stored on a well-known directories, which are quite known to the hackers. It could be a session cookies or it could be a persistent cookies. The session cookies are the temporary cookies that are erased when you close the browser. Persistent cookies are the ones which would remain on the computer unless and until there is a uh, expiry date on it. If it would reach that date only then it would be deleted. Now sometimes these, uh, these, uh, these cookie files are placed on the computers just to uh, know the behavior of the user, how he is accessing and uh, uh, gaining the uh, information from the websites, uh, his buying patterns and rest of the things. Now location of a web files and a cache, a cache information is located in various directories depending on the operating system and the browser that you are using. Cache information is typically in, in, um, stored in the subdirectories of the web browser etc. You can change uh, uh, how often the browser updates the cache and rest of the things. Now the browser information, whenever you log into a website, the browser would automatically send the information. It would log in credentials that are sent to the web server, maybe compromise the privacy of the computer itself. Um, we have seen people that they are keeping the same username and password for different websites. So if your one website, if your one password is leaked, it would be compromised in all other websites if you are using the same username and password. And if somehow someone would get information of your history of the computer, they know the websites that they are which are being accessed by you so your rest of the information would be compromised once the site that can be used for acquiring the information from the web browser um, is a browser spy uh, through that they can gain all the information about the websites that you have mentioned further uh, uh, the browser will automatically send the data about the host address, web browser version, um, the language which is used, files and the web server which, has, uh, um, which is accepting it, uh, the characters of the web browser accepts, browser encoding, the username, HTTP port of the computer. Um, uh, it could be a Java plugins, FTP passwords for any FTP websites that you are accessing, um, the current resolution of the computer, the maximum re resolution and then the version, color depth and lots of other details uh, which is uh, uh, available on the computers itself. Now there are some session exploits as well. Once establishing a connection with the web server, a user would provide an authentication information which is called a session ID. Now session ID is generated and then sent to the client shows that the user can communicate with the server until the session expires. So if you will try to authenticate with the web server, you will send a token to that and then it would verify your identity and it would create a session. Now that session remains active as long as that you are communicating with that remote server. Now it would have an expiry date on it and uh, usually it closes once the session is closed or once the browser is closed based on the session ID the client computer is given an access on variety of services on that server. Sometimes when the session expires uh, the server permits the same session ID to be used for the next session and an attacker can use the same server behavior to access the um, account details by uh, browsing or uh, by borrowing the session key and connecting to the server. Now web browser protection is uh, the precautions include disable the cache and set it to size 0. Uh, don't let it say files which are bigger in size. Set the browser to clear the cache every time you close the browser. Look into the file system to see if actually what it's doing. Set the history preferences to save to zero days. Uh, don't keep it on the computers over a longer period of time or better delete the files at the end of the session. Uh, do not set the vulnerable pages in your bookmarks and do not save the passwords to set um, or set a master password in order to view the uh, passwords which are uh, saved on the computer. Uh, now the precautions further could be that you can clear the cookies and remove the cookies. Uh, you can set the settings on the uh, computer or the browser itself that whenever you will close it would automatically clear it from there. Disable the JavaScripts if you are not using it. Um, use any latest updated browser. Firefox is really good. You can, either, you can even use Google Chrome 
or uh, you can use the Microsoft Edge which is the latest release of uh, Microsoft browser. You can set browser to accept only the cookies from the trusted websites and for rest of the websites if they are not trusted it must not be allowed to save any cookies on the computer. Set internet security to high requiring all scripts as for the permissions to run and for the trusted websites you can maintain the settings uh, based on your own infrastructure. Uh, so that brings us to the end of the chapter on uh, web application vulnerabilities. Uh, that's it for today. Thank you very much.